Welcome with Operations of Function. So I don't mean to scare you with my crutch, but uh, my leg kind of hurts when I'm walking around without a crutch. So I am going to try making this video. I hope it doesn't bother you. Uh, what I want to talk about is operations with functions. So uh, a couple of things, you know, we, we talked about functions. You know, talking about we have our input and our output and, you know, they, they pretty much have a rule, which we write as our equation. And there's multiple different types of functions. Well, one thing we can do with our functions is we can add them, subtract them, multiply them, and divide them, just like we were um, doing with regular numbers or integers. However, with functions, when you think about it, you know, function, like I said, its rule is an equation, like f of x equals x squared plus 1 or something. Well, so how do we add, you know, an equation plus another equation? Well, I'm going to show you here how, uh, how to do that. So a couple things I want you to at least un understand how we write uh, the operations of functions. So the addition of, fun of a function is f plus g of x. The subtraction of a function means f, or, and like I said, I'm just going to do these all from this one way, is f minus g of x. I'm sorry, so pretty much what that means is you're going to take the g of x function and subtract it from your f of x function, no matter what these are, and I'll go through a couple examples. This just means you take your f of x function and add it to your g of x function. In this example, we're going to take our whatever our f of x function is and multiply it to our g of x function. And here we're going to take our f of x function and divide it by our g of x function. So what I want to do is I'm going to go through a quick little, um, a very basic um, two functions for you, just so you can kind of get the idea, and then I'll do a little bit more uh, complicated version for you. All right, so let's go through the easy functions. Let's say I had f of x equals x plus 1 and g of x equals 2x plus 2. Now, a lot of students don't like this notation, f plus g of x. Well, really all that means is, that we're going to take f of x plus our g of x function. So really, if I just look at this, I can take x plus 1 plus 2x plus 2. Well, I don't really need the parentheses to separate them. So what I can do is say equals x plus 2x is 3x. 1 plus 2 is 3. So therefore, f plus g, plus g of x equals 3x plus 3. Now, um, I did want to uh, kind of give you a little bit of a warning that uh, some of these problems are also going to, uh, I'm going to mix in an evaluation problem for some of these. And what that means is instead of saying f plus g in terms of x, uh, I want to, they're going to want you to evaluate it for a number. So let's do that with uh, subtractions. Actually, well, subtraction is going to go, no, let's not do that subtraction because I'll show you how easy subtraction is. We'll do that with multiplication. So subtraction means f of x minus g of x. So that's x plus 1 minus 2x plus 2. Now it's important for you to put those parentheses because that's going to remind you I need to subtract the negative, I need to subtract the 2x, and I need to subtract the 2. So therefore, f minus g of x equals, uh, let's see, we have negative x minus 1. Now what I was talking about is, let's say I plugged in, let's say I wanted to find f of negative g, and not in terms of x, but in terms of 3. Well, what you can do then is once you, you first solve your operator, you first do your uh, composition, and then you evaluate it for that term. So now f minus g we know is equal to negative x minus 1. Now I just plug in my term minus 1. Negative 3 minus 1 is going to be a negative 4. Okay, So some variations of the problems might say it's subtract it, but don't put it in terms of x. Put it, you know, put it in terms of 3. Put, I want to find the value of the, of the subtraction of the functions of the value of 3, not at the value of x. Um, I told you I'd do multiplication, so let's do multiplication. So you're going to have a binomial 
times another binomial. It's 2x. So therefore, use the FOIL method. Okay, so what I'll have is 2x squared plus, let's see, the x, uh, x times 2 is 2x, plus 2x times 1 is going to be 4x, plus 2. And so that's uh, f of g of x. If you want to do the division, you just plug one and put it over the other. And for this one, we can't. For this one, we can't divide. Um, if you look at this, you say, well, um, you can't divide. Uh, um, you can't divide this. So what you have to do is you have to say, well, when can it? Um, I can't simplify this anymore, so what I have to do is find the domain, which the domain for this one would be all real numbers except x cannot equal a negative 1. Because if you put a negative 1 for there, that makes the bottom 0. So you got to just make sure you put the constraint whenever you have a rational function. All right, let's get into some examples. So I have here f of x equals x squared plus 3, and g of x equals 2x minus 1. So if I want to add them, what I need to do is... Simply, I'm just going to write f plus g of x <clears throat> equals x squared plus 3 plus 2x minus 1. Well, here, you just combine your like terms. My only like terms are my two numbers. So therefore, <clears throat> my answer is x squared plus 2x plus 2. Subtraction. So now, to subtract the two terms, I'm just going to take f, or f of x, which is x squared plus 3, and subtract. And please remember to put in parentheses, because that is the biggest, biggest mistake that I see students make. They forget to put the parentheses around, and now what they do is they subtract the 2x, and but they for, forget to subtract the negative 1. So like I said, you can distribute the negative sign, that becomes now a positive. So therefore, I have equals x squared uh, I can combine my like terms, which is 4, so now it's minus 2x plus 4. Now if I want to multiply <coughs> the 2, I'll have x squared plus 3. Actually, I'm running out of room, so eh, I'll do it here. f of x equals x squared plus 3 times 2x minus 1. All right, remember, I'm going to go through this a little more slowly, but when we multiply, we multiply our first terms. So let's do FOIL. Okay, FOIL. Multiply the first terms. So we have x squared times 2x. Outer terms. x squared times negative 1. Our inner terms. 3 times 2x, and our last terms, 3 times negative 1. Sorry, I'm kind of like writing down and with crutches, so it's probably not looking the best. Can you still see it? Okay, good. So we have x squared times 2x. That's going to give us, I'm just going to rewrite my answer over here. x squared times 2x gives me a uh, 2x cubed. x squared times x gives me a negative x squared. 3 times 2x gives me a 6x. Sorry, this is like really bad. And 3 times negative 1 gives me a negative 3. So therefore, that's that final answer. Um, if I want to divide these two, so f of g of x equals x squared plus 3 divided by 2x minus 1. And again, we can't simplify this further. Sorry, guys, the Pema shift's really bad. I'll change, I'll change it to Marcus. So, so x squared plus 3 divided by 2x minus 1. Um, for this one, not really anything I can do. I can't simplify it or can't divide it in. Um, well, I could divide if I needed to. But um, what you'll notice, though, is uh, you have to go and see what is your, you know, what is going to be your domain. So what value does your, does your x cannot equal, and you say x cannot equal 
1 half. Because if x equals 1 half, 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. OK, um, let's see if we can move on to the next problem, next two problems here, and uh, see if I can help you out with this. OK, so the next two problems, adding and uh, subtracting are going to be actually pretty easy. And even multiplying is going to be actually really easy. Because look at this. If you notice, remember, you can only add and divide two terms that are similar, right? So you only can add and divide like terms. Well, this term <coughs> is not similar to this term. That's a square root, meaning this whole term, 3 minus x, is raised to the 1 half power. Remember, only you can add terms that have the same power. So 1 half is not the same as uh, squared, nor is negative 4 the same as this. So guess what? When I'm adding these, You just add them up. I mean, there's, there's no way to simplify that any further. Uh, the next one, subtracting, is going to be the exact same thing. However, we need to make sure that if that, you know, if there's rewrite around, or if, if there was two terms, that we make sure we write in that negative sign in parentheses so we make sure we can distribute. Uh, multiplication. It's going to be a little bit different because now we have to use the distributive property. Uh, oh. And let me actually give you an example of a problem. Let's actually say that instead I want you to do of negative 1. Okay? Because like I said, there's going to be a lot of problems sometimes. We'll say, don't do f of, don't do f g. Do fg of negative, or don't do fg of, of x, do fg of negative 1. So, how would that look? So, therefore, when I multiply this, I got to make sure I multiply this term times that and this term times there. So, therefore, I obtain x squared times square root of 3 minus x minus 4 radical 3 minus x. Then I need to make sure I plug, evaluate for negative 1. OK, so let's see. We have 3 minus a negative 1, which would be plus 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So I have 1 times 2 minus, that becomes 2 again, times 4. Um, 4 times uh, uh, four times 2 is 8. So four, 1 times 2 is 2 equals a negative 6. So you could say f of g of negative 1 equals a negative 6. All right, lastly, let's do the division. Therefore, I have x squared minus 4 is over um, square root of 3 minus x. So therefore, now, I can't simplify this anymore. It's done. Um, but what I need to, do need to do is determine what the domain is. Now, remember, the domain has to be all numbers that are greater than 0. I'm sorry. Our domain is all numbers that can, are going to be make our root, we can't take the root of a negative number, nor can we divide by 0. So I know that 3 cannot be part of my domain. Because if I choose 3, that's going to make the bottom 0. Then I also know that my domain, um, if I pick any number that's larger than 3, then it, um, this is going to make it negative. So therefore, my domain is going to be all numbers. So x has to be less than 3. Because it's, it's, it's 3 or greater, then your, um, all your numbers can't be, uh, uh, will not be a part. So you can say that is your domain. Or you can say x cannot be greater than 3. All right, guys, that is how you uh, operate with functions. Usually I'll give you problems to try on your own, and I will do that. I'm going to show that, but I'm going to put it on a different video since I took so long doing this. So uh, please make sure you check out this work. You know, memorize it. Take a look at it. And, uh, you know, really operation of the functions is very simple. You just need a lot of practice on with the different types of functions.